Hello again, and welcome back to the Uncultured Cinematic Universe. Here we discuss your favorite movies of all time, as well as the ones that got away. We look at classic and iconic films from two perspectives, that of the diehard fan and that of the uncultured who's never seen it before until now. Right now. We're your hosts, Justin and Joe, here to act as your guides, playing part as both the fellow enthusiast and the ignorant and uncultured. <laughs> Uh, special announcement for this episode, Justin. Yeah. Uh, as of now, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. All That's true. Under the name Uncultured Cinematic Universe. So yes, baby. I don't know how you're listening to us right now if you're not <laughs> already on one of those three. <laughs> Today, we are nearing the end of September. Um, yep. About to enter uh, that most spookiest of months. Uh, and to celebrate that, we'll be throwing the third switch and talking about the <laughs> 1974 film, Young Frankenstein. Oh, man, Joe, I can't wait. This is my this is my season. Yes. Um, it is the season of the witch. Mm-hmm. And I am said witch. So First I'm so I ever met you. I, I, I clocked to you as a Halloween bro. Is you really good? Yeah. I'm glad I was able to portray that, uh, you know, <laughs> out into the world as accurately as possible. So yeah, so I'm I'm so glad we're doing this, um, starting the 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 season, the spooky season with the classic, which is something I one I've never seen before. I'd always mm-hmm. wanted to, and um, we'll talk about it later. How like I, uh, you know, was familiarized with it and what I knew, but yeah, I, I'm glad this is number one. On yeah, I'm interested season. to hear how much you knew about this movie uh, going into it because it's oh, yeah. it's it's definitely a classic, but it's older, and Mel Brooks definitely has uh, a lot of famous movies in his uh, little repertoire. Absolutely. Um, so uh, let's talk uh, first impressions. What what did you what you think of Young Frankenstein? Um, I thought it was it was fun. It was really fun. So I. I'm familiar with Mel Brooks and his work. So I knew what kind of movie I was in for, but I didn't know to the extent that this is a capital P parody movie. (laughs) And so like it, this, this is not Mel Brooks. Well, it is Mel Brooks going off the rails, but it's also like touching on the 1930, whatever the 1930s movie, the original, uh, uh, Frankenstein movie. Mm-hmm. Um, There's like five of them in nineteen in the 1930s and 1940s that yeah. he's all uh, parodying, which is great. And I had no idea that's what it was. So it was a, a visual treat. It was more like legit a horror movie to me in some aspects, with really good hard hitting uh, comedy throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, by the time you get to the 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 latter half, the the silly wheels come off the wagon. <laughs> it just goes wacky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is kind of part of a trifecta of uh, Mel Brooks movies that I grew up with. So I never actually I've never seen Blazing Saddles to this ooh, day, ooh. which is kind of like one of his better known ones. Um, but we growing up, we uh, <laughs> we didn't have like cable TV. So we just watched a lot of like movies uh, and DVDs and stuff from the library. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, our library in our small mountain town up in Blairsville, uh, kind of, uh, stocked a lot of like seventies and eighties comedy movies. So that's That's uh, really specific (laughs) where I know, I know it's, it's, it's where I had a lot of my background, uh, just growing up in, uh, the types of movies that we watch. So, uh, we saw this, we saw other Mel Brooks films. Um, we, we watched, uh, the pink panther movies a lot did you ever see any of those with peter sellers not that one i did see the one with uh that they redid in the 90s steve martin Martin. yeah that's (laughs) (laughs) yeah so so our, our my my history with mel brooks is like when he's like really leaning heavily into the uh parody films so he starts out with stuff like blazing saddles and um, this is actually this this young Frankenstein movie is actually in the same year as Blazing Saddles. Right. Um, so we we watched uh, Young Frankenstein. It's probably the more kid appropriate one of the two. <laughs> is um, it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd beg to differ. 
And then uh, we we also watched, uh, well, we owned, I'm pretty sure, Spaceballs and Robin Hood Men in Tights. So those were like yeah. the three big Mel Brooks movies that we grew up on. That's awesome. Um, all of which are very specifically uh, parodies of yeah. other movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this this one was great. And um, I'm so glad I've like rounded out my Mel Brooks uh you know, playing card, trading card. Like I got the stamp. Like I've <laughs> I've now seen Young Frankenstein, and one thing that I noted is that I can really start to see. I could start to see the seeds being planted of the future films being mm-hmm. paid off. Like specifically, you know, uh, Men in Tights and the producers and some other other stuff that he did later. Um, but like you can see him start to kind of play with some of those things, and it's really cool. I love that. Oh, um, I have like a specific note around that. Like how how. <laughs> He he plays with like inconsistencies in characters, especially with like Igor's hump. Oh, yeah. Stuff, yeah, which which actually started out as like a, a joke by the the actor playing Igor, but he he kept it in. And then you also see that later in uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. I don't know if you ever seen King, it with King, like, with King Richard, yeah, and the mole. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the mole just moves around his face throughout the movie. I, I immediately did. picked up on that and I was like, oh my God, that is amazing. That's clever. I love this. This is great. <laughs> so, hey, so before we dig in any deeper, let's go ahead and, and pop on this trailer. Uh, this is great. I, I've already watched this and you're going to love it, Joe. Mm-hmm. So here's the, I don't know if it's the original trailer, but it's about the same time. So we'll see. Here we go. Trailer for Young Frankenstein. It's coming. From the deep, dark recesses of the mind of Mel Brooks. I love him. Young Frankenstein. Like, you hear me? Give my creation life. Sky means business. Starring Gene Wilder <laughs> as Dr. Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. Peter Boyle as the monster. <laughs> Marty Feldman as Igor. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh. <laughs> Boris Leachman as Frau Blucher. And Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. What are you going to do to me? I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Kill the monster! See Mel Brooks' young Frankenstein. Yes, I think we could all use a good laugh. But don't see it alone. Don't miss Young Frankenstein, personally directed by Mel Blazing Saddles Brooks in black and white. No offense. <laughs> I love that. It he did the the voiceover. That's amazing. So you can yeah, you can already tell from the trailer that they're they're trying to kind of pay uh homage uh homage to uh some of these older uh black and white horror films. Um, and the, the <laughs> he throws in the Blazing Saddles bit. Like I said, like Blazing Saddles released like nine months before this film. Right. Yeah. And, and I think Gene Wilder is actually in that movie. Mm-hmm. And apparently he and Gene Wilder uh, just like got together in a hotel uh, for a bit and just started writing the screenplay for this one. I love um, that. just because they were both interested in it. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Cause like when you think of Gene Wilder, he's, he's obviously the standout for me in this film. He's one of the things that I think of most when I think of this movie, yeah. um, and this is actually like just based off of my own movie watching history. This is the Gene Wilder performance that I think of most when I think of him. Uh, mm. whereas a lot of people would think of obviously like Willy Wonka, right? Yep. That's me. Yeah. I, that, that was my, that's my cornerstone of of Gene Wilder. He is Willy Wonka to me. So seeing him in blazing saddles and, uh, and young Frankenstein, like now I can, a a more complete picture. No, this Uh, is, this is kind of the iconic Wilder performance, uh, for me. And I, I, (laughs) my favorite part about it is just like how straight faced yet unhinged he is. Unfucking hinged. (laughs) He goes for it in every scene he is in. Just and, he'll start at zero, go up to infinity, and then go back down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something I can really appreciate. You know, like he obviously, yes, obviously he carries the movie with how balls to the wall crazed, crazed he is. From that opening scene in the um in the school, in the the lecture hall or whatever, <laughs> stabbing his leg with the scalpel and playing it off perfectly. Yes. I loved it. 
he's like he's trying to maintain this air as like some sort of like renowned scientist but it's implied that he's kind of conning them as well because <laughs> yeah he's like paying off the patient yeah. that he's- <laughs> I was like, okay, so he's a little sketchy. He's kind um, of a scumbag the whole time. Yeah. So let's let's jump back for a second. Um, I've I had mentioned in previous episodes I've wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, wanted to do a specialized cocktail for whichever film we're talking about, uh-huh. and I finally did it. Uh, I didn't send you a recipe or how to make it because this is just off the cuff. Um, but this uh, is... listeners, the recipe will be made available mm-hmm. uh, as part of the description of this episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a behind the scenes Patreon only, Patreon mm-hmm. only kind of thing. Uh, Fifty dollars. <laughs> this is hot apple cider, the shot of spiced rum. I'm calling it uh, the sweet mystery of life. Oh, it's wow. you know you you drink it. And... How is it? Uh, it's so good. It's it's delicious. It's exactly what you need on a blustery late September day, and it um, is getting a little today. windy and cold out, which it, I love. This is great. It's absolutely set the mood for spooky season. But let me go back to some of my general musings on the movie. So, big time fog budget, big time spider web budget, mm. and I really dug that it had that legit 1930s look to it i had no like my brain had a hard time reconciling with itself that this movie came out in the 70s but it's made to look like it was one of the 30s originals like Mm -hmm. it's black and white and uh i I thought it was a really neat touch a really neat um look yeah yeah it's it's got uh old-timey music uh whenever it shows a, a wide landscape shot or something like that it's clearly like a painting yeah um that they're just filming there's Which is lightning awesome. and thunder going off in every scene, mm-hmm. regardless of whether or not it's raining. So that's Transylvania. That's a little bit of meteorology for you. Transylvania notorious for bad storms year round, regardless. It's meteorological wonder. It, uh, it is. Nice. Yeah. Um, let me let me give you some film stats real quick. Yeah. Hit, hit, I'm gonna make you uh, do the plot description. <laughs> okay. I forgot. I forgot we do that shit. Okay. <laughs> We, we need to settle on like the time limit for that because I think it's harder than we both think it is. Yep. Um, all right. So Young Frankenstein is directed by, directed by Mel Brooks, as we've been talking about, um, starring Gene Wilder, uh, Cloris Leachman, Terry Garr, Kenneth Mars, uh, and Madeline Kahn. Um, released in December of 1974, famously in black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh Made $86 million, which I'm sure was great at the time compared to its budget. You know what? I want to um, know like what that is in today's dollars. I imagine that's nothing, to, that's nothing to sneeze at. $86 million. Um, look up, Look up 1974 okay. inflation and then okay. type in $86 million while I finish this up. Yep. Um, the movie was nominated for two Oscars, most notably for screenplay. Um, people thought this movie was funny. Um, and it inspired uh, the song Walk This Way by Aerosmith, uh, based off of the scene where they're walking down the stairs and Igor goes, walk this way, and then he follows him down the stairs with a hump. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I loved that gag. I thought that was really, that was played really well. Oh, this movie is just 100% gags. It's just every scene is quotable and has a gag in it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so real quick. Uh, 1974 night to 2022, 86 million. The value of eight eighty six million dollars from 1974 to night to 2022. Uh, it's equivalent to about 516 million dollars. Oh my god, it's a lot. So if this came out today, this would have made half a billion dollars. Yep, people enjoyed this movie. Um, I would say so. I would say so. It's safe to say. I would say just like knowing what I know about Mel Brooks's filmography and his career, this was one of the high points, Mm -hmm. um, obviously after Blazing Saddles. And then his parody films tended to get reviewed uh, lower and lower following this, even though uh, both Spaceballs and Men in Tights, I believe, uh, have developed a sort of cult. Absolutely. Yes. I would say. Yeah. A uh, special place in my heart, in Same. particular. Same. And then he made like a Dracula movie that no one saw. Was that um, the one with Eddie Murphy, or is that different? No, it's it's got. Um, oh, it's uh, Leslie, Leslie 
Nope. No. Uh, Leslie Nope. Not Leslie <laughs> Mann. Fuck. What's his name? Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen from of Naked Gun. Of Maybe. Naked Gun. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we got right. there. We got there. We figured that out. Um, all right. So, uh, given that you have seen this film, I have. I'm going to give you. I think we settled on two minutes. Yeah, to that feels describe good. Describe the plot of this film, and this is yeah. this is somewhat of a simpler plot than say like Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction which yeah, was a nightmare to describe, mm-hmm. which I thought I could do in a minute, which is insane. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Justin, are uh-huh. you ready to I'm describe ready. the plot of Young Frankenstein in two minutes? In two minutes, yep. All right, um, your time starts now. Young Frankenstein opens on Mr. Young Frankenstein, or Frankenstein. He's trying to distance himself from the tainted past of his grandfather, Victor von Frankenstein, uh, in Transylvania. So he is a professor, a doctor, that kind of thing. Um, trying to make a name for himself, but he finds out that he is now heir to his grandfather's estate in Transylvania. So what does he do? He picks up and he moves over there. He meets uh, his lab assistant, uh, Igor, or Igor, who uh, his grandfather also worked for his grandfather. Fun connection there. So he moves in, he meets his uh, beautiful lab assistant, uh, Inga, and um, they start getting to work uh, almost immediately he stumbles upon his grandfather's work and he's like, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. So what do they do? They dig up a, a, a recently dead man and, um, they start to experiment on him and he's, uh, gets a, gets a brain The he, he wants one Hans Drucker, but, uh, Igor drops it. So he gets another one and it's abnormal. It's bad. So he turns it on. It actually works. He does the experiment and the monster lives. Uh, but he's a little angry cause he's got the abnormal brain. Um, so the, the monster escapes, they try to catch him, they bring him back. Uh, then the villagers catch wind, and then they're like, we need to go make sure that he's not doing experiments, but he is doing experiments. The monster escapes again. He meets Gene Hackman in the woods, uh, <laughs> and then I'm they capture him again. Capture seconds. him again. Uh, they, then he says, I'm gonna, I need to show this off to my fellow colleagues and they do a song and dance number, but then someone makes the monster mad. He gets caught. They break him out. He comes back home. He transfers their conscious, his consciousness into the monster's consciousness to quell his rage. Uh, And then he also gets his dick in the end, I think, or something like that. They trade dicks. Um, And everyone lives happily ever after the end. Young Frankenstein. It's very confusing. uh, What happens? (laughs) And dick wise. <laughs> um, yeah, you were able to summarize that plot rather concisely, but uh, we are no longer friends because you managed to do it without mentioning Madeline Kahn at all. Uh, um, she and she was thrown she in there. The standout She's... performances of this film. She was thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I love that you touched on in your plot description the scene with the brain um because that's actually one of my (laughs) one of my favorite scenes in the film is igor is tasked with uh going to find uh first of all transylvania apparently has like a a brain lab uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) their town square (laughs) where you can basically just like go in and steal a brain uh so he's supposed to go and find this like dead (laughs) genius's brain he drops it. It's it's scattered across the floor. <laughs> then he panics and picks. <laughs> oh, just abnormal brain. It's an abnormal brain that's labeled like "do not use." <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite part of that scene is the beginning because they come to the door where he breaks in, and it's like <laughs> all drop offs must be made by five p.m. Any drop offs, please drop brain in Dropbox. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so weird. And then I mean, obviously the brain goes into the monster and they (laughs) he realizes and so gene wilder takes him aside and he's like i go (laughs) just a quick question for you (laughs) what brain ended up in there and then the classic the classic line of abby something (laughs) abby something (laughs) abby something abby normal abby normal (laughs) you telling me i put an abnormal brain (laughs) Oh, a classic Gene Wilder freak out. Um, yeah, very good uh, plot description. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think two minutes was the perfect amount of time. It really was. It really was. Because like you said, this movie is pretty, 
uh, linear, pr- pretty straightforward. It's um, it's old fashioned in that way. It's it's very much like a uh, an old fashioned plot structure. Yeah, I thought I thought we arrived in Transylvania rather quickly. There wasn't too much explanation or too much uh, like quelling on his end to be like, should I go? Am I am I a Frankenstein? Am I not gonna do that? But uh, it's just like the 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 guy gives him his thing from his grandfather's estate, and he's just like, well, I guess I'm going. And he just goes, um, which is fine, because it just for plot sake, time sake, because this was this movie is like a tight hour and a half or whatever, mm. um, and it moved it along, and I and I guess I didn't really need it, um, but yeah, overall I thought I thought it was fun. Uh, I want to talk about the cast specifically. So obviously we mentioned that Gene Wilder definitely is the standout. Is he wearing eyeliner? Is he wearing mascara? Probably, <laughs> but damn it, he looks good doing it. His hair is insane. What's going on there? Is it gray? Is it just frizzy blonde? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, Peter Boyle as the monster. Uh, everyone knows him as Everyone Loves Raymond. That was That's my only touch point to that. Movie. So I knew he was on Everyone Loves Raymond, but I've never actually seen him in that. I've, I've never seen Everyone Loves Raymond. Who is he on Everyone Loves Raymond? He's like the dad. Yeah, I think he's yeah. his dad. Ray good Romano's dad. Yeah. So he has that Raymond money. He's got that. Well, he's he's dead, but oh. uh, he had that Raymond money, R.I.P. and uh, probably the young Frankenstein money, uh, among other things. But uh, he was a great monster. Um, the zipper on the neck. Ki- I did notice that this time around. Yeah, killed me. I was like, "What is <laughs> Ryan?" <laughs> Ryan like nudges me. She's like, "What? Why the zipper? What's it zipping in? <laughs> Why?" <laughs> it's so good. Um, okay, so this is my main my main MVP is not Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. And I know that is a controversial statement to say. My MVP of this whole movie is Marty Feldman. Oh, yeah. Igor. Um, Incredible fourth wall breaks. He gets all the good jokes. Mm -hmm. Um, The the physical comedy um, is is just perfectly executed. There's there's another movie that I don't think Mel Brooks was a part of, but it's called like the adventures of Sherlock Holmes's like less famous younger brother or something like that. <laughs> okay. Where Gene Wilder and Marty Feldman team up again as like a version of Sherlock Holmes and a version of uh, Watson. You should check it out. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, they were a great combination. I got to say in, in terms yeah. of just cinematic history, those two played off each other so well. Um, I would agree. Uh, I think from from what I've read, this movie was a lot of improvisation on the uh, actors' parts. Even before uh, it was like a hot thing to do in, in the movie biz of just yeah. improvising lines. I love that. This is like probably pre-SNL even. Yeah, like. this is pro... Oh, well, uh, 74. When was 74? like Steve Martin and all? It was around the 70s, I think. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not versed in that. But okay, so yes, Marty Feldman, Igor, MVP. My close second, again, is not Gene Wilder. Close second is whoever played uh, Inspector Kemp. I'm so glad you said that. So <laughs> that, that guy is... was amazing. <laughs> that guy's name is Kenneth Mars. Um, the only other thing I've ever seen him in, I'm, I'm sure he's been in a lot of stuff. He's probably like a prolific comedic actor. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever watch like Malcolm in the Middle in full? Not in full, but I'm familiar with the show. So there's a couple seasons towards the end of that show where the older brother, uh, he's like, he's out of military school and he goes to work on a ranch out West. And it's that guy who runs it. The guy who plays the inspector. Whoa. And he has this like (laughs) insane German accent. the entire time. (laughs) Is it the same character? That's amazing. It's, it'll just like it'll switch the story to out West where it's him and uh, the older brother. It's, it's kind of hilarious. But yeah, like all all of his gags were incredible. The they didn't explain it; they didn't have to until the very end. But like his wooden arm thing <laughs> was amazing. Uh, his uh, the monocle over eye patch, like genius touch. Uh, it's such a great last line where his arm just falls off and he just goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> to the woodyard or whatever it was. Like it's so good. <laughs> All of his lines were great. Anytime he got like overly passionate and he just got way too German and everyone was just like, what? <laughs> I, I Actually, I wrote it down. Here is it. 
Uh, yeah, anytime he had to repeat himself, it was just so good. It's just follow, following in his grandfather's footsteps. Footsteps, footsteps. <laughs> so good. I loved it. But yeah, he was my number two. And then number three, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder's great. Um, yeah. yeah, Madeline Kahn is up there for me, but uh, I think this this was just our first taste into uh, Madeline Kahn comedic culture growing up. Really? Um, I don't know if you've seen her in, in other movies. She is amazing in movies like uh paper moon um which is mm. another black and white one um but also did you, did you see the movie clue from the 80s Are you yeah yes 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 so she plays uh okay. mrs white in that one with the the flames monologue um <laughs> <laughs> she's great and i think she's also in blazing saddles and then yeah. um mm-hmm. so frau frau blucher um cloris leachman yes cloris leachman also from Malcolm in the Middle. I'm making a lot of Malcolm in the Middle connections. Is this is this Malcolm is this Malcolm talk? Uh, should we establish a new segment called Malcolm talk? Malcolm, yeah. talking <laughs> Malcolm, yeah. Connect whatever movie we're talking about. <laughs> we can as much as we can to Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> yes, it's a great show. Um, <laughs> I think she's great in this. Um, it's if if you get a chance, you should watch the bloopers for this movie where she starts oh, backing up. It's it's pretty sweet. I, then, my my touch point for Cloris Leachman is from the oh God, what was it, two thousand six, two thousand seven, uh, Broken Lizard movie, Beer Fest. What is a Broken Lizard movie? Broken Lizard is the comedy troupe that brought you uh, Super Troopers. Oh, so it's so that like- same group did another movie a couple of years later called Beer Fest, and it's in Germany. It's surrounded around like a beer drinking competition, and Cloris Leachman is in it. And that was my first exposure to Cloris Leachman, and she fucking kills in that movie. <laughs> and she's the same kind of thing of just like a, a loosely German woman making dirty jokes, being hilarious. She's great. I love how we're not saying stuff like the Mary Tyler Moore show that she's actually known. For. <laughs> like yeah, Beer Fest and Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cloris Leachman, known for Beer Fest and Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love the, I love the blue uh, gag with the horses. Um, that was great. Something you would never think of, uh, there's also just like several little mini scenes in here that would just like, they would be my little monologue. Uh, if I ever had to like perform something on stage, um, oh, yes. like, um, so the scene where they're bringing the body back from the graveyard and they get stopped by the cop. <laughs> arm is sticking out so he has to cover it and use it as his arm while he's talking I, <laughs> I was dying during that scene it is so clever and you don't see those kinds of movies anymore so I wanted to talk about that mm-hmm. this is obviously in a, a, a Hollywood a, a movie you know continuum of yesteryear um, comedies aren't like this anymore they are not um, played in the pocket as much as this is. Mm-hmm. They're usually played for cheap laughs or for um, something that can easily get dated. Whereas this is, you know, uh, can live on uh, years later and still leave people in stitches. Yeah, um, it's it's a seventies movie throwing back to the thirties, and everything is so heightened that it it's lived on through the decades. And I love that, and I and I hate that. You know, Hollywood's kind of like lost that comedy is now kind of just baked into whatever other major genre mm-hmm. it is. Like, it's hard to make a good comedy. And I don't know if they've, if, if I've ever seen one uh, in recent years of just like a full stop comedy or parody or anything like that in a long time. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely don't have as many like mainstream parody movies. And I also feel like you couldn't really make a comedy successful these days without like some sort of music element uh, in it, which this film like doesn't really have. This film just has like a a very classical uh, score going on in the background, like classic horror almost. Mm -hmm. Um, And then obviously like the 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 violin theme that kind of recurs throughout. Yeah. Um. And then a, a fun little uh, uh, sh- sign of its times is the slightly uncomfortable amount of <laughs> oh, <laughs> borderline sexual assault in this movie. Yeah. Oh, man. I saw that scene coming, and I was hoping they were going to divert. But nope, they kept it in there. Uh, I, 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 
yeah, you can't really defend something like that where the, the monster essentially like kidnaps uh, Madeline Kahn's character and then they engage in sexual activity that doesn't really seem consensual. Consensual? No, it, not at all. Um, her confidence throughout that scene kind of takes you through it, I would say. You're I never think so really too. You're really worried too much about her being in danger. And, and yeah. it's, it's obviously all played for laughs, but it's definitely a, a, a cringy moment. Yeah, um, I could I could feel my face and body getting hot. I was like, please don't do it. Oh, they're doing it. But yeah, you're like you said, the, um, the way that she plays it does carry it and make it yeah. uh, okay, in a sense. And, and then, and then the payoff, the payoff of the song is <laughs> hilarious. You're just imagining she's she's kind of like maybe never really <laughs> orgasmed before or something like that. And she's she's really feeling it from this, this monster. Yeah. Oh, my God. Which is um, it is what it is. Um, and then, yeah, it's 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 a really confusing ending scene as well, because they kind of <laughs> redo it uh, where. Uh, so like you were saying in the plot description, <laughs> he, <laughs> Gene Wilder, as the scientist, gives part of his brain to the monster. And then you realize towards the end that part of the monster went to him as well. And maybe his his penis got bigger. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, is, but, it, is it just through brain fluid? Is it mind over matter <laughs> at that point? Or did was there a follow up procedure? I don't know. And there these are the questions I have. Follow up procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Very specific. And it seemed to be uh, successful. Mm -hmm. And I love that out of all of all of this, the, the journey that we get through um, the storytelling, the character arcs and the, the homages, the the lasting ending joke of this movie is a dick joke. And I think that is a hats off. What job well done. Mel Brooks. <laughs> Um, so you were talking earlier about like monologues mm. and if you were ever to read on stage, um, you know, uh, for a part, mm -hmm. you know, my, when I was watching the monologue, Gene Wilder does, uh, the Ascension scene when he's plugging up the monster and they're going up that scene, like for some reason, like I was just like, this is fucking awesome. This oh, is really rad. Shakespearean at some point. It's so good. I wrote it all down and I want to recite it for you. I'm not going to get like hyper into it, but just like we'll, we'll break it. it down line by line. So, you know, it from wrote. that from that fateful day when stinking bits of slime first crawled from the sea and shouted to the cold stars, I am man. That's awesome. First of all, I was like, okay. I'm, I'm waiting for jokes the whole time that he's doing this and not one happens. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just, I'm still in the moment. I think it's credit to Gene Wilder. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go on with it, but I think it's credit to him that I, I know we don't want to break the mics at this point, but he's <laughs> screaming his at lungs the top out of his lungs. With these lines. <laughs> They're so good. And that right. happens so often in this movie where he will just go from a regular speaking voice and then start screaming as loud as he possibly he can. He goes ham. <laughs> All right. So. So now we are you know, from the uh, primordial ooze. We are now crawling out, screaming at the stars. I am man. Our greatest dread has always been the knowledge of our own mortality. Existential. I love it. Super cool. But tonight we shall hurl the gauntlet of science into the frightful face of death itself. Oh, that's so cool. I want to, I want a t-shirt of that. Uh, tonight we shall ascend. And as he says this, like that's when the platform rises tonight, we shall ascend into the heavens. We shall mock the earthquake. Oh, that's so cool. We shall command the thunders and penetrate into the very womb of impervious nature herself. <laughs> so cool. Like you said, it's Shakespearean. And I, I tried like hell to dig through and find out like anything about this monologue. Like, is this in reference to something? Is this in Mary Shelley's book? Is this in the original Frankenstein? I couldn't find anything. Um, so hopefully maybe uh, an avid listener, maybe one of our friends in Brussels who has been listening. Shout out to Brussels. We love Brussels. We love Brussels. Uh, maybe someone can help us out um, uh, there because I think it's so cool. I want, I want to know, like, did Mel Brooks write that? Like, did Gene Wilder come off with that off the top of his dome? Probably not. I bet it's in reference to something, but it's awesome. 
yeah if we were to do like some sort of like close reading on the the high level character arcs happening in this movie it it's there's a there's a lot of irony at play here because it starts out with Gene Wilder's character as the descendant of this long line of basically mad scientists who's trying to, you know, walk uh, an honest line in science and be kind of like an actual scientist yeah. in the modern man of the world. And the second he gets back to his um, his roots, roots. in yeah. Transylvania, he's he <laughs> he's kind of descends into this mad version of science while also, like you're saying, professing to uh ascend to this deeper level uh this 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 higher layer actually uh of science when really it's 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 something that's more um within his own uh blood and more instinctual as opposed yeah. to uh uh like man-made technology and science it's 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 really just like nature versus uh science happening uh, yeah all in this this same movie it's so great i i love that and so like stripping away some of like the outlandish gags and comedy parts of it. Like, and that's what I said, like at the top, like this is, this still plays to me, like as a horror movie, it still has the main elements of the original story and the original movies. And that's why I dug it so much, uh, being a spooky boy, a spooky bitch myself. Um, but yeah, like, like you said, the whole kind of story arc is in that monologue of starting from slime, from nothing to just, uh, yeah, what is it? Uh, yeah, penetrating to the very womb of nature <laughs> and just like creating this abomination. Um, but then they then he takes it on stage and they play putting on the Ritz and that's <laughs> that's all she wrote about that and it's amazing. Yeah, I think I think some of the the best comedic moments of this film are when they when they like portray Gene Wilder as some like incredibly sexy uh, like very like proficient man of the world who all these women are attracted to. And then they kind of contrast that with these incredibly weird and dumb moments. Like when, when they're trying to figure out how the secret passageway behind the bookcase works, where he's like, yeah, obviously we have to (laughs) remove this book here and nothing happens. Then they take the candle and he's like, I'll just block the bookcase with With my my body. body. (laughs) It's to one crush of my him. favorite like yeah. visual gags of the movie is him like spinning around and then rushing towards the crack in the wall where it just <laughs> slams it in. And then he's got like the the little high pitched voice. Um, it's great. It's great. You and you've seen that kind of stuff emulated hmm. um, by modern comedians. You know Jim Carrey and other physical comedians uh, try to capture that same kind of uh, honesty. And it's it's hard to I think it's hard. Yeah, to. yeah. The the Jim Carrey movies are are probably uh, closer to a modern version uh, of this, I would say. But yeah. Again, when we they, come to when we come to Christmas season, and we you know inevitably maybe we'll talk about the Grinch. I don't know. We'll find some sucker who hasn't <laughs> seen it. But it's a similar kind of thing of just like letting the actor go ham and just just going bananas on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a certain like earnestness to this movie and uh, Marty Feldman's character, Igor, kind of breaks the fourth wall at certain points. So there's there's kind of a wink at the camera, but you get a lot more of that, I would say, in in modern comedies where they don't want to they don't want to be too serious about how comedic they're being. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this this struck that that nice balance. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I would say like if I if I ever had to perform a one woman, uh, one woman <laughs> God, one man show. If you want to, you know, yeah, uh, it would be scenes from uh, this movie uh, stuff like when <laughs> when he's being like uh, choked out by the monster and he all of a sudden has to like do charades <laughs> to mime yeah. out the word sedative and they start guessing set a give <laughs> set a give like. <laughs> You can't you can't do that. Like th- that kind of comedy wouldn't play. It wouldn't hit. It again? would be hard to do. It would be hard to do these days. Um, mm-hmm. Again, you know, like I said, it's a lost art. This movie is a good again time capsule of you know uh, a forgotten era of just when comedy could be comedy, and um, I-, I loved it so much. So talking again about just other scenes that just left me dying, um, putting on the Ritz was not what I expected. I'd seen some of the imagery 
of the monster in a top hat. Mm -hmm. And I think it's from one of the posters or whatever, but like they don't go into much detail of like, why is he wearing a top hat? Um, So, you know, he's at like the showcase or whatever, proving that this monster has, you know, autonomy and can, can move on its own and go backwards and all this kind of stuff. And then it's like, but now we're going to try something different. And they do the number and you can see Igor like playing the piano just a little bit off to the side. (laughs) And I was like, I, I had no idea this was happening and it killed me. It was so good. Hmm. Yeah, that I I would say that is one of the more iconic uh, scenes from the film is them doing putting on the Ritz. Mm-hmm. I, I almost I, read... I almost call this drink putting on the Ritz or just the Ritz, but uh, but the the sweet mystery of life is better. How's that drink treating you, by the way? Real good. I, I'm all warm and fuzzy on the inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Alrighty. Well. Uh... Yeah, so that's that's young Frankenstein. What I guess coming into this movie, did you had you seen any of the original like Frankenstein movies? Because I've never really touched on like the 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 ones with Boris Karloff and stuff like that. Yeah, Boris Karloff, uh, Bela Lugosi, um, Mm. Dracula, all that kind of stuff. I unfortunately haven't. I am, you know, kind of a, a. in that regard, a poser spooky bitch. Mm -hmm. Um, They're streaming somewhere. I think they're on (laughs) Peacock or something like that. So I need to take the time to, you know, uh, educate myself on the, you know, the masters of the, of the yesteryear. Um, But no, I haven't. So I, I didn't catch, and I'm sure you, I would be able to catch more references and like, Oh, that's like a neat musical motif from the original movie. That's, that's kind of clever or some of the set pieces uh, that kind of, you know, call back to the original. I bet that would be a, a real interesting payoff. Yeah, it's just it's heightened music, heightened performances, heightened uh, lights versus shadows. Uh, I think it's it's all calling back to that that era of 1930s and 1940s horror films. Yeah. So um, but what I had seen and I touched on this earlier of my uh, touch points to Mill Brooks, um, one of the movies I've seen so many times growing up and even still recently is uh men in tights. And that was, that <laughs> is my Mel Brooks movie. That's the one I, I've seen so many times and I can, you know, quote it. Uh, so I knew that and space balls too. Um, but those were like my main things like, okay, this is Mel Brooks. It's going to be tongue in cheeky, very um, hammy, lots of uh, shtick, lots of, um, you know, silly gags and stuff like that. And the, the humor, some of the, the, the one-to-one line jokes just being killers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of knew that coming in, but I didn't expect it to be, uh, a lot of that kind of subdued in some ways. Uh, when you compare this to Spaceballs or men in tights specifically, like that one is like gag after gag after thing after this, um, sight gag, callback reference and scene after scene. Um, but this one is a, it's played a little bit more straight. I'm imagining. Um, I bet if I go back and watch some of the originals, um, uh, that we were talking about, uh, I bet it would be pay off a little bit more, but yeah, I yeah. think, I think especially with men in tights and space balls, there's, there's a lot more, uh, breaking the fourth wall. There's a lot more like pop culture references. I'm pretty sure in space balls at one point they have a gag where, they're fighting with lightsabers and he accidentally like hits one of the cameramen off screen <laughs> and then he like falls into this endless pit <laughs> and then they yeah. both are kind of like look at each other. Um, but with young Frankenstein, you can definitely tell that they're putting a little bit more effort to like make this movie stand on its own a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, uh, it's in it, and it's it's more of like a, a stylistic homage to uh, the movies that came before it rather than like how are we going to make fun of this scene for scene? Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So which, which, uh, I think is also funny. I, I, I really have a special place in my heart for space balls and men in tights. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so now like I've, I've rounded out, um, you know, like I said, I've, I've rounded out my Mel Brooks trading card playing list of like, yep, yeah, I've seen where he came from in the seventies to pay off some of the stuff he did in the eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it was cool to see that to see those seeds being sown to see him try some of that stuff, um, 
you know, some of the offsite gags, you know, when they're playing darts and he misses and it shoots out the window and you hear with the cat and like, it's, (laughs) it's classic Hollywood comedy. Um, But I loved this. I love this movie. This was fun. This was a a good choice to kick off spooky season. Uh, Yeah. Before we get into the, the game to kind of close out this episode, do we want to give a, a quick preview of like uh, what we can expect during spooky season? Oh my God, Joe, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, I'm very excited. So the next two uh, entries that we're going to talk about, uh, I'm taking the reins on the next two just because I, I made Joe be a pushover on it. You are um, a quote unquote spooky bitch. I am a spooky bitch. So for October, we're going to do two. Uh, entries. The first one we're going to do is Over the Garden Wall, which is an animated feature of sorts. It's really 10 episodes, short episodes, 10 minute episodes. It's like a mini series. Uh, it's a mini series that uh, was released on Cartoon Network back in 2015, I think. I'll, I'll shore up all my numbers and stuff by then, but we're going to do Over the Garden Wall, which to me is a quintessential fall Halloween uh, venture. Um, which is going to be exciting to talk about. And then to round out the week before Halloween, we're going to do um, 2007, 2008, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Mid to late 2000s, um, Trick or Treat by Michael Doherty. Uh, Which is like an actual scary movie. It is an actual scary movie. It is, um, you know... uh, I can't think of the, the the term right now off the top of my head where it's different vignettes that kind of play over like an overarching story. Yeah, um, I think I think it's vignettes like the little episodic uh, yeah. storytelling. Yeah, it's it's really great. It is my favorite horror movie of all time. Oh, uh, shit. It, it perfectly encapsulates the spooky season um, to a T, um, in my opinion. So that's what we're going to be doing in the month of October in the coming weeks. So. Be on the lookout for those. If those are some of your favorites or you've always wanted to watch, you've always heard of, um, yeah, catch up and, and get ready for those. I'm really excited for both. Um, I, I think I've seen the first episode of Over the Garden Wall and I never got super into it, but everyone who's watched it that I know of, they always love it. Yep. Uh, so, and I think it's a, a really uh, fun and pretty animation style. And then Trick or Treat, I I love a good scary movie. It's great. Yeah, I think I may Uh, want to... Okay, so actually, I may want to watch Over the Garden Wall with you in person. May do that. We'll make a bowl of popcorn. Oh my God. We'll take pictures for the gram. Uh, We're going to have an Instagram soon. Spoilers, (gasps) by the the way, listeners and watchers. We'll have an Instagram. We'll take some pictures. Over the Garden Wall. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. And then um, the month of October, uh, Regal Cinemas are playing Trick or Treat in theaters. We're going to go see that. We we I think we might also try and see Scream, Scream two, two yeah. at yep. some point. Yeah. Um. For those who don't know, Scream was actually the second episode of this podcast, which we haven't actually released yet. <laughs> it's it may a, be released as bonus content at some point. Yeah, that's a we, deep uh, locker uh, in the safe. It, it's a deep that's cut. A, that's a Disney Vault situation. Yeah. Right. We are, hands are tied, guys. You know, we can't do anything about that. But yeah, so that's um, what's coming up in the in the spooky season to come. Um, but yeah, I, I loved Young Frankenstein to be a good kickstart uh, for it. I got I got all the spooky vibes in the right places, and I got a, a good funny bone tickling out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could give that. Yeah. Um, Justin, are you ready for a game? <laughs> oh, yes, I am. All right, let's get into this and close out this episode. Okay, so the game I have for you, based on Young Frankenstein, I have decided to call How to Build Your Very Own Frankenstein Monster. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so here's the situation. You are a mad scientist who has just rediscovered your grandfather's uh, laboratory in Naturally. Transylvania. Okay. I was about to um, ask, is this on my mother's side or my father's side? Uh, you can choose. Okay. Because that, that, that takes, okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Do you have Transylvania roots either way? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have naturally decided to make a, uh, quote unquote Frankenstein monster of your own. Um, and as we all know, um, the Frankenstein monster consists of a head, a torso, 
legs, uh, arms, and a personality. So okay. those uh, those five pieces. Um, do you have that all in your in your mind? Head, torso, legs, arms, and personality. Uh huh. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you five famous people named Frank, and you're going to tell me, I think you can already <laughs> guess, yeah. um, which famous person you would use to fill each of those roles. So Great. one guy's legs, one guy's head, one guy's personality, yada, yada. Okay. Do you have the rules? I have the rules. Give me the Franks. Okay. So your Franks are, number one, Frank Sinatra. Number two, Frank Ocean. Number three, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Number four, Francis Scott Fitzgerald, famously known as F. Scott Fitzgerald, famously the writer of Great Gatsby. And your fifth one is three-time Academy Award winning actress Francis McDormand. Justin, tell me how you will build your Frankenstein monster. Great. I have all these here. I'm going to connect the dots and uh, let's, let's go on hold and I'll come back after a minute all right. and we'll talk about it. All right. And the representative is here. Here we are. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm so ready. Uh, okay, so head, torso, legs, arm, personality. The Franks are as follows. We have Frank Sinatra, Frank Ocean, uh, FDR, <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald, Francis McDormand. Admittedly, Joe, I have no idea who the fuck Frank Ocean is. <laughs> Um, what Frank he, what, Ocean what he looks is like. a singer, songwriter, rapper. Okay. Don't know what he looks like, but I attributed uh, the arms to Frank Ocean's arms. Frank Ocean's arms. That's a good choice. Yep. Uh, for comedy's sake, FDR, legs. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, Famously great legs. <laughs> Famously. Um, head, I went with Francis McDormand. Uh, that is a good choice, yeah. Right, you know, instantly recognizable. Very expressive. And then, and then from the neck down, it's just hell, right? Because you got <laughs> Frank Ocean's arms, FDR's legs. Torso, I attributed to F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, being an author. I imagine he drank a lot. Yeah. So it was, he probably had a soft, shitty body. So I thought that would be a hilarious torso to throw on there. And I think person, he was really tall and lanky, actually. Okay, well... That still works. That still works. <laughs> Personality, Frank Sinatra. Uh, just like a, a booze hound womanizer who can kind of sing pretty well um, and just loves calling women broads. <laughs> so if that's coming from the mouth of uh, uh, Frances McDormand, that's instant hilarity. I that's think my monster. going to get her her fourth Oscar. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my Frankenstein's monster. Justin, thank you for playing How to Build Your Very it. Own Frankenstein Monster. I'm going to give you an eight out of ten uh, across the board. Yeah, um, uh, I'm, I for... may I may open up Photoshop to make a cursed image. <laughs> if we have a brave listener who also wants to partake and do that as well, that would be fun too. Please do, and please tell me how you figure out how to get an image of uh, FDR's legs. To <laughs> he had polio, right? I believe he did. Yeah. Okay. So just famously in a wheelchair. wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. All right. Um, okay. Justin, thank you for watching uh, yeah. Young Frankenstein with me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I always uh, take pleasure uh, yeah. whenever I get the chance to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to spooky season on me too. the Uncultured Cinematic Universe. Me too. I can't wait. So yeah. Uh, Check us out on YouTube, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, just search the Uncultured Cinematic Universe. We'll be there putting out uh, good shit for you regularly. 
Um, this has been fun. Joe, I appreciate it as always. Uh, take care, y'all. Bye.